Hey guys, this is Carl from TechLingo and we have with us here the king of androids, the Google Pixel 3 XL, which we'll be doing a full review of. Now, why are we calling this the king of all androids? Uh, well, because Google actually as a software company, it owns Android, this open source uh, operating system that is being run on smartphones like even Samsung, Sony and LG. Now, when we're talking about these kind of smartphones, sometimes you get this impression that Android is actually uh, you know, very slow or it's very buggy or it's just not responsive enough compared to iPhones. Now, here is where the misconception comes in because um, those manufacturers, they actually implement their own uh, styling, their own uh, set of features and all these sometimes include bloatware as well. So the Pixel line of devices is actually one of the purest form of Androids that you can get in the market right now. You know, buying one of this, these Pixels, uh, you'll actually be experiencing what Google originally intended for all Android smartphone users to experience. So in that case, let's move on to our full review of the Google Pixel 3 XL. Okay, let's begin by talking about the build and design of the Pixel 3 XL. It comes in three different colors. You have the just black, not pink, as well as clearly white, which is the one we have here. Now, when you look at it for the first time, it definitely looks similar to its predecessor in the sense that it borrows a very similar design language. Um, on the Pixel 3, however, now the entire back is actually made of glass and that has a particular purpose and that is for wireless charging. So in that sense, you need to know that in an aluminium phone, in an aluminium built phone, you're actually unable to do wireless charging. So at the back of this phone now, you actually have this really nice uh, matte coating that Google has placed here. So different from other fully glass phones, whereby it will be like a fingerprint magnet, you know, you have a lot of fingerprints at the back. This glass matting actually gives you a better grip as well as prevent these sort of fingerprints from cluttering at the back. Now, when we're talking about the Pixel Stand, actually Google has implemented a bunch of features into this Pixel Stand, not just only for wireless charging. So let's say you put this in your bedside and you set an alarm, you know. Uh, when the phone actually rings, it would slowly and gently wake you up with uh, lighting up the screen. If not, it can also act as a Google Assistant as well as um, a live photo frame. So you can choose some of your uh, photos from your gallery and actually it will display it just like a live photo frame. On the Pixel 3 and the 3 XL, the biggest improvement is definitely the camera. We are really impressed by some of the test shots that we have taken. And you know how different manufacturers, you know, they take different approaches. Let's say the Samsung Galaxy A9, they recently released a phone with four rear cameras. But in terms of Google's point perspective, uh, actually they don't need any on that sort because the camera, one single powerful image sensor is actually powerful enough to actually do lots of features. So the first feature that I'd like to mention is Top Shot. You know how some professional photographers, they actually have experience so they know uh, exactly when to press that shutter button. But let's say you're taking a group jump shot and you accidentally press the button a little bit too early or a little bit too late, you know, just when everyone is back on the ground. Well, not to worry because the Pixel camera is actually super powerful. With Top Shot, you know, uh, every time you press that shutter button, the Google camera actually takes a bunch of photos before and after. So in that sense, let's say if you press the button a little bit too late, you know, you can always go back to your gallery, uh, look for that photo, you can just swipe up. And there's actually an array of pictures that you can choose from. So simply slide the slider and you can choose that perfect timing, you know, just when everyone is up on the mid-air. So uh, it's a really impressive feature that I have to say. Um, we have actually tested it out, so have a look at some of these shots. Unfortunately, one thing that we realized was actually in terms of quality. So when we actually uh, found the perfect shot, sometimes um, the picture quality may suffer a bit. But keep in mind, you know, that the Pixel camera is taking a whole bunch of photos, maybe like 100 at one go. So you cannot expect every single shot to be perfectly crisp and clear. So with you being able to choose like that right moment, I think it's already quite impressive. Uh, and hopefully in the future whereby you know Google is releasing new software updates We'll start to see that these photos that we select from the slider they get clearer and clearer The next thing that we have found out about the camera is this new feature called night sight now without the use of any flash You know the Google pixel has done some really smart uh, AI technology in some sense It is able to actually combine a bunch of photos and even though it is a night setting uh, photos actually turn out to be really well lit. So check out some of these shots that we have taken in comparison to the Google Pixel 2 XL. Next up is Playground, and that is something you can actually show your kids to impress them or at least impress some of your friends. Um, with just a single camera, um, somehow the Google Pixel is able to sense its surroundings and find actually a flat surface. 
And what happens here is augmented reality, you know. They actually can, you have a bunch of Marvel characters you can choose from, whether from Iron Man, Captain America, you can just simply drag them onto the screen. And with some smart motion tracking, uh, the camera actually knows where you're facing and somehow the characters come to life in that particular video. The new Google camera has one more trick up its sleeve. Um, and that is photo booth. So using the front facing camera, you just need to place your phone on top of a shelf or on the table and using some smart AI technology, it's able to sense that you're actually giving a really wide smile or even some funny faces and it'll automatically press that shutter button for you. So this is like, uh, forget about remotes, you know, it's automatically taking photos uh, just when they think that it is the right moment. Now let's move on to the front-facing cameras. You have a dual camera arrangement here. Uh, one of it is actually a normal image sensor, while the other is actually this ultra-wide camera selfie. Check out how many additional people we could actually fit in this frame, uh, you know, down here in our tutorial room in school. Pretty impressive. Now let's talk about the front-facing speakers as well. These are two speakers, a stereo arrangement, one on the left and one on the right, and um, they actually sound much, much better than the Pixel 2 XL. In a sense that uh, in terms of frequencies, I think that the low mids are actually much more powerful right now. You get a little bit more depth and a little bit more sound compared to the earlier version, the Pixel 2 on the Pixel 2 XL. So whenever we play music, you can also feel like the phone vibrates just a little bit. So you know there's definitely more sound coming out from these speakers here. Personally, I'm actually using the Pixel 2 XL right now and when I picked up the Pixel 3 XL, I can feel a lot of difference in terms of speed. You know, everything is much more snappier when I'm moving around apps. And that's because uh, inside you're actually having a new Snapdragon 845 processor. In terms of multitasking, you actually have 4GB of RAM on this Pixel 3. Um, there has been reports online saying that, um, you know, compared to the iPhone, the Pixel might not perform as well in terms of multitasking. You know, let's say for an iPhone, you can open multiple app instances and the phone can actually easily switch between each other uh, without having to reload that application. So unfortunately, on the Google Pixel 3, uh, somehow, um, maybe it's the RAM management on the Android OS. Um, it does not perform as well as the iPhone. So hopefully in the future, we can see some software updates that Google will be releasing to actually solve this particular issue. In terms of storage space, you actually have two different options to choose from, the 64GB model or the 128GB model. Uh, I would personally think that you don't really have to worry so much about uh, available memory storage space because the every Pixel device actually comes with free unlimited cloud storage. And that means every photo that you take will get automatically backed up into the cloud. And you know, the Google Photos app, it has this really smart feature. So whatever that has been backed up via Wi-Fi, uh, after time when your phone is actually close to running out of storage space, it actually gives you this notification on the top of the app. And you can simply tap on it and the Google Photos app will actually sort out what has been backed up and what has not been. And it will automatically remove um, photos that have already been backed up. Therefore, freeing up much more space on this device. Included inside the Pixel 3 and 3 XL are some Google earbuds and these are connected via USB Type-C. Now you can see that the earbuds have a unique design in a way that they actually use part of the cable and form a loop over the top of the Pixel earbuds. And this actually helps to give you a secure fit, uh, you know, touching against the inner wall of your ear. So we definitely found this to be quite uh, useful in the sense that we don't actually have our earphones dropping that easily. Unfortunately, one particular drawback is actually, uh, you know, compared with conventional earbuds which have the silicone rubber tips, uh, they actually help to better isolate background noise. So on while using the Pixel Buds, we actually can still hear some external noises whether we are crossing the road or we are in the bus. So definitely something to note. Uh, but if you still want to make use of your existing headphones, the Pixel 3 and 3 XL do come included with a Type-C to 3.5mm adapter, so you can always use your existing headphones. So here comes the important question, should you be getting the Google Pixel 3? Uh, definitely, you know, if you're looking to get an Android smartphone, the Google Pixel 3 is actually one of the best smartphones that you can get right here in 2018. If you're a Pixel 2 XL user like me, uh, you can look forward to wireless charging and uh, even an ultra-wide camera selfie in the front. And of course, a slightly larger screen, of course, with a little bit of the notch as well. So the Pixel 3 will be available in Singapore from 1st November, and you can already pre-order them on the Google Online Store as well as Singtel. The Pixel 3 will be sold from 1249 Singapore dollars, while the Pixel 3 XL will be sold from 1399 Singapore dollars. The Google Pixel Stand is available at 119 Singapore dollars, while the Google Case is actually at 60 dollars.
We hope you've enjoyed our full review of the Google Pixel 3 XL. Feel free to leave us some message in the comment section down below or even some suggestions if you have for our future videos. Uh, don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest tech reviews right here in Singapore. This is Kyle, signing off.